Welcome back, fellow trailblazers. Today, we are diving into the dynamic world of Salesforce Flow Builder. As we all know, Flow Builder is a powerful tool that empowers us to automate complex business processes without writing a single line of code. But hey, let's be real, while it offers incredible potential, it's not always smooth sailing. In fact, working on real-time projects with Salesforce Flow Builder can present a myriad of challenges that test our skills, patience, and problem-solving abilities. So, buckle up as I take you through my journey, shedding light on the hurdles I faced and conquered along the way. What are some common challenges you faced in practical development of Salesforce flows? Solution Some common challenges include staying within gunner limits, handling errors effectively, optimizing performance, designing user-friendly interfaces, integrating with external systems, managing version control and deployment, testing and debugging thoroughly, documenting flows comprehensively, managing change effectively, and ensuring user adoption. And training. How do you ensure that your flows stay within Salesforce Ghana limits? Solution. To ensure compliance with Ghana limits, I carefully optimize queries and minimize DML operations. I also leverage bulk processing techniques and avoid unnecessary looping or recursion. Additionally, I regularly monitor resource usage and performance during development and testing to identify potential issues early on. Can you explain your approach to handling errors within Salesforce flows? Solution I utilize fault paths within flow elements to handle potential errors gracefully. This involves identifying potential failure. Points such as record lookups or DML operations, and configuring fault paths to handle exceptions appropriately. I also implement retry logic and logging mechanisms to aid in troubleshooting and resolution of errors. How do you optimize the performance of Salesforce flows, especially when dealing with large datasets or complex logic? Solution I optimize performance by minimizing the number of queries and record updates, leveraging bulk processing techniques, and optimizing the design of the flow to reduce unnecessary complexity. I also employ caching strategies where applicable and utilize asynchronous processing options to offload intensive tasks. What strategies do you employ to ensure effective user interface design within Salesforce flows? Solution I focus on designing intuitive and user-friendly interfaces by carefully organizing screens, using clear and descriptive labels, and providing helpful guidance throughout the flow. I also prioritize simplicity and efficiency, avoiding clutter and unnecessary steps to streamline the user experience. How do you approach integrating Salesforce flows with external systems or other Salesforce features? Solution I carefully plan and coordinate integration efforts, ensuring seamless data exchange and maintaining data consistency across systems. This involves leveraging available integration tools and APIs, implementing error handling and retry mechanisms and thoroughly testing integration points to validate functionality and data integrity. Can you discuss your approach to version control and deployment of Salesforce flows? Solution I utilize version control systems to track changes to flows and manage deployments across different environments. This involves creating separate branches for development, testing, and production and following best practices for merging and deploying changes to minimize disruptions and ensure consistency. How do you ensure thorough testing and debugging of Salesforce flows? Solution I conduct comprehensive testing of flows in various scenarios to ensure they function as expected. This includes unit testing, 
individual elements, integration testing with other processes and systems, and user acceptance testing to validate. Functionality from an end-user perspective I also leverage debugging tools and logs to identify and resolve issues efficiently. What steps do you take to document Salesforce flows effectively? Solution I document flows comprehensively, including their design, functionality, dependencies, and any relevant considerations or constraints. This involves maintaining detailed documentation within the Salesforce environment, as well as external documentation repositories or knowledge bases to ensure accessibility and clarity for all stakeholders. How do you address challenges related to change management and user adoption in Salesforce flow development? Solution I prioritize effective communication and collaboration with stakeholders to ensure alignment and buy-in throughout the development process. I also incorporate user feedback and iterate on flow designs based on user needs and preferences. Additionally, I provide comprehensive training and support resources to facilitate user adoption and address any resistance or reluctance to change. How do you handle situations where a Salesforce flow exceeds gunner limits? Solution I mitigate the risk of exceeding gunner limits by carefully planning the flow design, optimizing queries and DML operations, and leveraging bulk processing techniques. Additionally, I monitor resource usage during development and testing phases to identify potential issues early on and make necessary adjustments. What strategies do you employ to ensure error-free execution of Salesforce flows? Solution I implement robust error handling mechanisms within flows, such as fault paths, to gracefully manage exceptions and prevent failures from disrupting the flow of execution. I also incorporate logging and monitoring solutions to track errors and facilitate troubleshooting when issues arise. Can you discuss your approach to optimizing the performance of Salesforce flows? Solution I focus on streamlining the flow logic, minimizing unnecessary actions, and optimizing queries to improve performance. Additionally, I leverage asynchronous processing options and consider the impact of flow design on system resources to ensure optimal performance, especially when dealing with large datasets or complex business logic. How do you ensure that user interfaces in Salesforce flows are intuitive and user-friendly? Solution I prioritize user-centric design principles such as clarity, simplicity, and consistency when designing flow interfaces. I use descriptive labels, intuitive navigation, and helpful guidance to guide users through the flow seamlessly while minimizing complexity and cognitive load. What steps do you take to facilitate integration between Salesforce flows and external systems? Solution I leverage Salesforce integration capabilities such as external services and Apex integration to establish seamless communication between flows and external systems. I ensure data consistency and error handling across integration points and conduct thorough testing to validate end-to-end -end functionality. How do you manage version control and deployment of Salesforce flows in a collaborative environment? Solution I utilize version control systems, such as Git, to track changes to flows and manage collaborative development efforts. I follow best practices for branching, merging, and deploying changes across different environments while ensuring proper testing and validation to minimize deployment risks. What approaches do you take to ensure comprehensive testing and debugging of Salesforce flows? Solution I conduct unit testing of individual flow elements, 
integration testing with other processes and systems, and user. Acceptance testing to validate functionality and identify potential issues. I leverage debugging tools such as debug logs and system diagnostics to troubleshoot and resolve errors efficiently. How do you document Salesforce flows to ensure clarity and maintainability? Solution I maintain detailed documentation, including flow diagrams, process maps, and descriptive comments within the Salesforce environment to provide clarity and context for flow designs. I also document dependencies, considerations, and usage. Instructions to facilitate maintenance and knowledge transfer. Can you discuss your approach to change management and user adoption in Salesforce flow development? Solution I prioritize effective communication and collaboration with stakeholders to solicit feedback and ensure alignment with business objectives. I provide training and support resources to empower users and facilitate adoption of new flows. Additionally, I follow change management processes to minimize disruption and ensure smooth transitions. How do you address scalability and future-proofing considerations in Salesforce flow development? Solution I design flows with scalability in mind, considering potential growth and evolving business requirements. I leverage reusable components, modular design patterns, and configurable options to facilitate future enhancements and adaptations. Additionally, I stay informed about new Salesforce features and best practices to ensure that flows remain relevant and effective over time. How do you handle complex business logic within Salesforce flows, especially when dealing with multiple decision points and branching pathways? Solution I break down the complex logic into smaller, manageable components using decision elements and subflows. By organizing the flow logic into modular units and leveraging decision elements effectively, I ensure clarity and maintainability while accommodating intricate business requirements. What strategies do you employ to ensure data consistency and integrity when working with Salesforce flows? Solution I leverage transaction control elements and error handling mechanisms within flows to maintain data consistency and integrity. By implementing rollback strategies, transaction boundaries, and error notifications, I ensure that data changes are processed reliably and accurately. Can you discuss your approach to managing long-running processes or asynchronous tasks within Salesforce flows? Solution I leverage scheduled flows or platform events to manage long-running processes or asynchronous tasks efficiently. By decoupling time-consuming operations from user interactions and leveraging asynchronous processing options, I ensure that flows remain responsive and scalable. How do you address security and access control considerations within Salesforce flows? Solution I adhere to Salesforce security best practices and leverage built-in features such as record-level security, field-level security, and permission sets to enforce access control within flows. By respecting user permissions and implementing appropriate security measures, I ensure that sensitive data is protected and access is restricted as needed. What steps do you take to optimize the user experience and performance of Salesforce flows on different devices and screen sizes? Solution I design responsive and adaptive user interfaces within flows, taking into account various screen sizes and device types. By utilizing dynamic layouts, flexible components, and media queries, I ensure that flows are accessible and optimized for different devices, enhancing the overall user experience.
How do you address localization and internationalization requirements within Salesforce flows? Solution I leverage Salesforce built-in localization features and design flows to support multiple languages and regional preferences. By using custom labels, translations, and local-specific formatting, I ensure that flows are accessible and user-friendly. For global audiences Can you discuss your approach to handling complex data transformations and manipulations within Salesforce flows? Solution I utilize formula elements, variable assignments, and collection operations within flows to perform complex data transformations and manipulations. By breaking down complex operations into smaller, manageable steps and leveraging built-in functions and operators, I ensure that flows can handle diverse data processing requirements effectively. How do you ensure that Salesforce flows remain scalable and maintainable as business requirements evolve over time? Solution I design flows with scalability and maintainability in mind, following best practices such as modular design, component reuse, and documentation. By designing flexible and configurable solutions that can adapt to changing business needs, I ensure that flows remain viable and effective in the long term. What strategies do you employ to minimize technical debt and code complexity within Salesforce flows? Solution I prioritize clean and efficient design principles when developing flows, avoiding unnecessary complexity and technical debt. By following coding standards, modularizing logic, and refactoring as needed, I ensure that flows remain manageable and maintainable throughout their life cycle. How do you stay updated on the latest developments and best practices in Salesforce flow development? Solution I actively participate in the Salesforce community, attend training sessions, and engage with online resources such as Trailhead and developer forums. By staying informed about new features, updates, and best practices, I ensure that my flow development skills remain current and relevant. How do you handle dependencies between multiple flows or between flows and other Salesforce components? Solution I carefully manage dependencies by establishing clear relationships between flows and other components such as Process Builder Processes, Apex Triggers, or External Systems By documenting dependencies and following best practices for modular design and encapsulation, I minimize the risk of conflicts and ensure seamless integration. Can you discuss your approach to optimizing user interaction and feedback within Salesforce flows? Solution I prioritize user-centric design principles, incorporating features such as dynamic screens, conditional visibility and real-time validation to enhance user interaction and feedback. By soliciting user feedback during the design process and iteratively refining the user experience, I ensure that flows meet user expectations and facilitate productive interactions. How do you handle the migration of flows between different Salesforce environments, such as sandbox and production? Solution I follow established migration processes and leverage tools such as Salesforce Change Sets or Salesforce DX to deploy flows between environments by conducting thorough testing and validation before deployment and adhering to deployment. Best practices, I minimize the risk of deployment errors and ensure a smooth transition. What strategies do you employ to ensure backward compatibility and version management for Salesforce flows? Solution I maintain backward compatibility by carefully managing changes to flow designs and following versioning conventions to track revisions and updates. 
by communicating changes effectively to stakeholders and providing migration guides or support resources i ensure a seamless transition for users when introducing new versions of flows how do you address performance bottlenecks and scalability limitations when scaling up salesforce flows to accommodate growing user or data volumes solution i conduct performance testing and profiling to identify bottlenecks and scalability limitations and optimize flow designs accordingly by leveraging features such as platform caching asynchronous processing and scalable architecture patterns i ensure that flows can scale up to meet increasing demands without compromising performance can you discuss your approach to handling complex approval processes and workflows within salesforce flows solution i leverage flow elements such as record updates email alerts and custom notifications to automate and streamline complex approval processes and workflows by designing flexible approval paths implementing escalation mechanisms and incorporating user feedback loops i ensure efficient handling of approvals within flows how do you ensure data privacy and compliance with regulatory requirements when designing salesforce flows solution i adhere to data privacy and compliance standards such as gdpr and hipaa by implementing appropriate security measures within flows this includes enforcing data access controls encrypting sensitive data and auditing user interactions to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements and protect data privacy What steps do you take to ensure robust error handling and recovery mechanisms within Salesforce flows? Solution: I implement fault tolerance and recovery strategies within flows by leveraging error handling elements such as fault paths, try catch blocks, and retry mechanisms. By logging errors, notifying administrators, and providing user-friendly error messages I ensure that flows can gracefully handle unexpected errors and recover from failures. How do you address usability and accessibility considerations within Salesforce flows to accommodate diverse user needs and preferences? Solution: I design flows with usability and accessibility in mind. following industry standards such as WCAG and section 508 to ensure accessibility for users with disabilities by providing alternative text for images using keyboard shortcuts and testing flows with assistive technologies i ensure that flows are usable and accessible to all users how do you balance the trade-offs between declarative development using salesforce flows and custom development using apex code solution i evaluate the complexity and requirements of each use case to determine the most appropriate approach considering factors such as time to market maintainability and scalability while i prefer to leverage declarative tools such as flows for rapid development and flexibility I resort to custom development using Apex code when complex business logic or performance requirements necessitate it.